Welcome to season two of the Fashion and Color Podcast, your favorite and soon to be number one fashion podcast in the world. I want to invite you to step into our space where dynamic conversations with the most creative designers, trailblazers, and those influencing fashion. This podcast was inspired by our groundbreaking book, Fashion and Color, Volume 1, which is a celebration and preservation of the rich history of Black designers who have shaped the fashion industry. Remember, please support designers of color. Let's get into this week's episode. I am here with one of the hottest stylists in the industry right now. Someone who inspires me when I look at their Instagram. I've been stalking him a little bit because there's something about him that reminds me of me. He's always taking like these big, bold risks. I am so excited to be here with Brian Javar. Hello, hello, hello. How you feeling? I'm feeling blessed. I'm feeling happy to be here. You coming out of a big award season? Yes, yes. And how was that? Like, what, 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 like what, what was some of your like big moments during the award season? Award season was really. This one was chill for me, but it was great. Um, had some great moments with uh, Robin Thede and Chris Perfetti. Um, don't style men a lot, and so this last year I set it out like I want to style men, and so. And you've been killing it with him. Thank you. He looks like. I mean, you can see it in him. He's so yeah. confident mm-hmm. in what you put him in. Yeah, no, it's been great because I'm like, how do you take risk with men? Right. But also like make it appropriate. So it's been a lot of fun with him and like the feedback I've been getting from everybody from him and just from everybody seeing the evolution of his style and his image. And what's and so the, crazy for every shot, Cheryl Lee Rath is commenting on like. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. It's been great, though. It's Any good. other big moments that you loved? Rest. Yes. <laughs> Rest yes. throughout the uh, war season. But this year, I've been, um, I've loved, like, what I've done with Robin Thede as well. Like, being able yes. to, like, our She's Emmys looked moments. amazing. Thank you. No, it's been great. I, like, in the beginning, she was like, you know what? I'm just going to throw my hands up and just let you do you. And that's been amazing. I know, I know you love that. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. been great to be able to, Come in and do me. Like, if something is, you know, she's mm-hmm. not feeling something, she definitely, you know, would let me know. But, like, allowing and actually someone trusting me, mm-hmm. which is very important. Where some people are like, well, you're a stylist. Yes, they trust you. But, like, there's a difference of someone, like, putting their hands up and, like, what do you want? Right. Versus, like, dictating everything. Right. And because it's your image. Like, you know, you don't just throw something on right. somebody. And, right. like, she loves it. So it's been really great. And the feedback from what people have been seeing of the transformation of her as well. And I've been working with both of these people in a very short amount of time. Right. So it's been great to be able to kind of, like, get it in and, like, knock it out the park early on with, bo- with both of them. Here's what's crazy. You're going to probably look at me crazy, too. It almost feels like you, like, burst into the scene. But I know, uh but I know it's never like that. Correct. There's always a journey. Mm -hmm. Do you, can you share just some of the journey? Yeah, no, I definitely can see, I definitely see that and feel that even for myself. Yeah. I think that it's been like that. I've, if I'm being very honest, I've definitely fought accepting for a very long time. And honestly, I think probably for the first time last week is the first time I accepted where I'm at. The blessing that Mm -hmm. God has on my life and being able to just be like, you know what? It's okay. You work to be here. So Mm -hmm. you deserve to be here. You're not going to, you're not here. And then it's going to go away tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You're here. It took 15 years to get here, Mm -hmm. but you are here. So, um, journey, I'm born and raised. That's a, that's a, that's a shift. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a mindset shift one, because for me anyway, you get in this place where you're like, so used to being an outsider where you're so used to like not getting the opportunity being a little dog or you right and then something shifts and it's almost like you have to make this internal shift with it yeah and, and it, that takes yeah. a minute. It, it almost minute. takes stillness to it, get there it took a while for me yeah. if i'm being very 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 yeah. honest um a lot of my friends family members clients like some people have saw it for me six, seven years ago, and I always knew it, Mm -hmm. but it was a thing of actually accepting it because I feel that we work in an industry now where it's okay to be behind the scenes but also be talent, Mm -hmm. but also there's a very thin line, and I never want to not be booked for something because someone thinks that I want to be the same 
talent is them. And mm -hmm. I think my talent is different in the sense of my talent is inspiring people, talking to people and being just my authentic self. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be in front of the camera as an actor and like mm -hmm. be this model, like that's not my talent type mm -hmm. of thing. So I'm very careful of been having to find what that thin line is mm -hmm. to still be able to do my job, but also not be, not scare off the publicist, not scare off the management, mm -hmm. not scare off the clients because, you know, I am not just a behind the scenes person as well. So do you being think authentic that's for, in it. You feel like that's for all stylists or do you feel like that's for black stylists? I think both. I think mm -hmm. it's both, but specifically, yes, black, because it ain't but seven of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really 40 of us, but right, it ain't but right. seven of us, honestly. And for white stylists and other stylists, it's when it's all 40 of them mm -hmm. that like, you know, there's only a few that like in the black world probably mm -hmm. only knows, but there's 40 top white stylists. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. yeah, so, um, but definitely being a black stylist, being a male stylist, and mm -hmm. also being someone that is just very authentic to who I mm -hmm. am, it's not the easiest to like be okay to be like, all right, I am talent, but also be behind the scenes like you know mm -hmm. sometimes people look at it as like oh are you going to try and walk the same carpet as this person mm -hmm. and it's like for me that that's not who i am there right. are some things that work for some people and that's amazing right that i'm just not that but i'm like not saying that i won't be that right. but it's me accepting and getting to what works for me if that makes sense yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i totally see that um because you just did actually you just hosted something for banana republic i, I saw did. that yes, that was yes. dope it was it was great so a uh, banana republic um i'm it was announcing our partnership um, okay congratulations so, thank you thank you we can't say too much but we're you know figuring out what that looks like um okay. what that partnership is but it was great to for them to reach out to me yeah. and they wanted to do a Black History Month event and also yeah. donate to charities on my behalf and oh, ones wow. that were you know close to me, yep. ones that I felt great for. So one that I donated to was um, Taraji P. Henson's foundation mm -hmm. that raises awareness and mental black. I mean, in the community for mental health yep. awareness. And yep. then another one was the Bahati Foundation where they donate bikes and cycles to. Um, sorry, they donate bikes to the inner city children okay. to help fight like obesity and help keep them mm -hmm. mobile and just like exercising and things like that to, you know, really help them help with activities, but also help them, you know, be healthy. I thought it was such a brilliant collab. Thank you. When I saw you there, uh, Gap Inc. is one of our partners for nice. this 2019. We did a collab with them in 2021, I think, with Harvison, Charles Harvison. Nice. That was yes, incredible. Um, but I felt like when I saw that, I was like, I wouldn't have automatically put these two together. Same. But it makes so much sense, same. especially since they're getting into home and stuff. Yeah. Um, well, that's something, honestly, same for me. I, I'm in a season of like praying and manifesting things that I want, but not putting the exact the title. The box around it. Correct. Yeah, so it's like, yeah. this is what I want and let go, let God. And yeah. that was one of the things that God was like, this is for you. And I'm, you wouldn't even have thought it. It worked. Yeah. It works. Yeah, thank like, you. Like, the photos and everything, I was just like, this is dope. Thank you. So, I know you're from Compton. Mm hmm How do you go <laughs> from Compton to where you are now? It's what was a, that? It's been a journey. So, I also, I lived half of my life as well on, like, South Central Watts. Okay. Uh, with my mom. And then my mom passed when I was a teen, so I moved to my mm -hmm. sister, my brother-in-law, and their children, and all the kids in the home. Um, growing up was, I mean, I won't say that it was the easiest childhood, but mm -hmm. I also never needed for anything. There was a lot that I wanted for, but single mm -hmm. mom on, uh, you know, Section 8 and like, you know, mm -hmm. affordable housing and all of that, but I never, I was always taken care of. Yeah. Um, got into fashion or my interest of fashion happened at a very, very, very young age, mm -hmm. at the age of four. Um, wow. Sergio Hudson said the same thing. He said four of, or five. I, I wonder if it's the same. <laughs> we have a, what inspired him. Um, so I remember my my sisters are 19 and 20 years older than me. Okay. And so they were, if my mom was going somewhere, my sisters would watch me. But was Love Got to Do It? It had just came out. Mm. And they went to go to the movies and watch it. Couldn't find a babysitter. And... 
had to take me. Mm -hmm. And it was like the greatest thing they could have did, but it was also a mistake <laughs> on their behalf uh -huh. because I was so intrigued with Ike and Tina's wardrobe in comparison mm -hmm. to everyone else. Like everyone else was dope, but Ike's wardrobe was so great. It was so great. And Tina's wardrobe was phenomenal. Yeah. And I remember being like, what is that? Why is that moving like that? Like, And it was the sequence and the fringe mm -hmm. and all of those things. And I was getting on their nerves. Mm -hmm. And I remember around that time. Because you're seeing a whole different storyline in what they see. Yes. They actually watching the main thing of the movie, but you're I'm watching seeing, all visual, the yes, visual. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I'm four and I can't understand. Yeah, so yeah. my eyes is closed over, you know, yeah, the yeah. certain parts. But yeah. I just see the fashions. I'm seeing her as an anime bullet to now mm -hmm. as Tina Turner to the Tina Turner. Mm -hmm. So just seeing the evolution, I'm just like at four. I was, Disney, I wasn't seeing that in, char in cartoons mm -hmm. and characters. Mm -hmm. And I remember around that time seeing music videos on TV. And the closest thing to that was in Vogue, was mm -hmm. the sexiness, like the very like the uniform yeah. and just all of this like this fashion but grownness right. to it um you know always like just pointing and just like asking the questions and like it's fashion it's style mm -hmm. and from there that's when my eyes just became to be was open to what fashion was wow yeah and wow. at the age of four how much did your imagination play in where you are today even still now what's crazy is if you there's any person that you I could interview now like my teachers, my peers of like elementary, junior high, and high school, and some college, um, especially like at a young age. Mm -hmm. Nobody would say that they're surprised of where I'm at now. Mm. And I think that's one of like a great thing that I'm blessed to hear. Because at first I used to be like, huh? But like, no one's like, no, you, this has literally been you. This has been your calling. This has been your destiny mm -hmm. since you were a child. Um, I used to, in elementary, I would go to Target and or Kmart, and you know how like kids would get toys and things like that. The toys I was getting was jewelry kit making things, mm -hmm. and I was making jewelry, taking it to school in Ziploc bags with three ninety five plus tax. And I, <laughs> oh, you yeah. was a business oh, no, man. No, I was, I was a, yeah, I definitely was. I remember my my third and fourth grade teacher, Miss Scott and Miss Argonoff, were their best friends, and they were like just so nice and so sweet, like and. I remember I would like try and sell jewelry to them and they're like, you don't even know what taxes are. And I'm like, I don't. But when we go to the store, they say some, some plus tax. So I'm going to charge y'all what tax is. So didn't know what it was, but I've just always been this person junior high. I was making uh, purses out of denim, uh, out of like Levi's mm -hmm. and like putting rhinestones on it. And then in high school doing the same thing and like having fashion shows. I was class president. Um, so we were like have fashion shows mm -hmm. to raise money for prom. So this has just always been Dude, me. Who you are. Yeah. What was your first big break? I would say my first big break was at 19. I was a... Um, I interned for Lori Phillips. She was a Black Eyed Peas stylist. Mm. And I remember meeting her at like a Grammy gift suite um, and got her card and emailed her some months later. Interview, got the job and like, I'm like, oh my God, it's gonna be like Sex in the City. I'm gonna get her coffee and blah, blah, blah. I like work my way. Uh -huh. My second day I was on set with, at a video shoot for the Black Eyed Peas. Like my very second day. I'm literally, wow. I'm just doing, Starbucks runs and things. No, she threw me in the field, but also like taught me. She like, mm -hmm. oh, that's one thing like I'm so grateful for her because she took this young boy from the hood and saw something in me. Mm -hmm. And she made me feel like I was working with her and not for her. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was my big break of like seeing, being on a, a you know, million dollar video shoot and like artists that I love and seeing and like, you know, look up to and things like this and like seeing green screen for the first time in person and dressing them up in, you know, crazy costumes and things mm -hmm. like that. It was, that was the eye opening thing of like, okay, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. I really do want to create stuff like this. And I can't wait to where I'm on the other side of, I am hiring mm -hmm. the people to help orchestrate this. Mm. Has yeah. that moment come? Yes. Yeah. Now the moment has definitely come up in a sense of like being able to be the stylist and hire a team and design this and have this, you know, like be the creative director. Like it definitely has um, come and happened for me for sure. What What do you look for when you're building your team? 
People that will work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these assistants, these interns, they don't want to work. They want to just post on Instagram right. and say what set that they was on. And I'm talking to y'all because I need y'all <laughs> to understand this. I complain about it. My friends complain about it. It's so hard to find good help. When I was coming up in industry, I understood what interning was. I understood mm -hmm. what being an assistant was. Like, mm -hmm. understand that I might leave set at 5 a.m. in the morning, and then I might have to start returns tomorrow at noon. Right. And I'm going to call my friend and complain about it because I'm tired, but I'm not going to complain to while I'm on set or to the person because this is what I want to do. Like, right. you know, in, right. in today's time, it's, it's different. Hard. It's wow. different. They were like, um... I gotta do what? Maybe you hit a work, right? Right. Like, like, right so right. it's 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 a very, 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 very different time this time around. But right. so I look for people that wanna work. I look for right. people that are hungry. I look for people that remind me of myself. Mm -hmm. I, w I didn't always have it. I wasn't right. I wasn't equipped with it. I had to learn the things. There right. was a lot of times that I fell and bumped my head and made mistakes and yeah. did certain things. Because we all do. Because mm -hmm. we all do. But mm -hmm. I was blessed to work with people that were willing to grow me and not yep. to just throw me to the side. Like yeah. um, working with Lori Phillips, one of my, um, the people, another person I used to intern with was is Enrique, who styles uh, Jenny Ortega. Mm -hmm. And and me and Enrique interned together years ago. And we saw many girls from FITM come in and come out. Mm -hmm. Come in and come out because they just wanted the glitz and the glam. Mm -hmm. They weren't willing to do the work and be tired and like right. don't care about what they look outfitted. Like right. those type of things. So it was was it's great to in that moment be hungry for it and then look back like me being hungry in that moment mm -hmm. 15 years ago, 10 years ago has got me to where I'm at here, where I'm at now because right. I put in the hard work. There is this misconception mm -hmm. about this industry. You just talked about it, right? That you're going to get in, you're going to be fabulous. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not going to go through anything. Like, people just think you got here. What were some of the challenges? Like, what was maybe the hardest challenge you had to overcome yourself, whether it was mental or situation or whatever it was, mm -hmm. for you to get to where you are now? To not take things personal, mm. to learn that it's a business mm -hmm. and everything and everybody is not your friend. Mm. And I think once I realized that. When did I, you realize that? How transparent are we going to be today? Real honest. The journey hasn't always been easy, I think, for myself of like, um, I've definitely had moments where I wanted to quit where I was like, this mm -hmm. industry isn't for me. I've had many of those, like some mm -hmm. being very mediocre, some mm -hmm. being like, oh, I can understand why you would have wanted to just maybe go back to school and be corporate. Um, I remember having my big break on my own as a stylist working with somebody. I was happy. Mm -hmm. I was grateful. And there were people that I looked up to and that like inspired me and things like that. So like a few of them would check on me like, yo, you good? This, that, mm -hmm. and the third. I remember having a discussion with someone and just like wanted to make sure that I was good, making mm -hmm. sure that I was like charging the right fees, mm -hmm. asking me what I had coming up and all mm -hmm. of these things. Like, you know, just making sure like fellowship, brotherhood and making mm -hmm. sure like uplifting another black stylist. And I was happy because I felt like I finally have my moment. I am... I'm seen now in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I'm not just, you know, the little dog. Mm -hmm. Now, like, I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. I say 10 days to two weeks max, said client was no longer my client and was this person's client now. Mm. And that was something that, like, tore me up. Like, I definitely went through, like, a kind of like a, a depression for sure yeah. because it was like I was finally there and then it was like, the rug had been like mm. ripped from under my feet. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't easy. Like it definitely took a while. It took time for me yeah. to understand what was going on and being okay with being upset. But also, what are you going to do? Are you right. going to be mad and just cry and 
go somewhere else or right. are you going to understand that this is life if you was a dentist this could have happened to you if you were a carpenter right, right. the same thing could have happened yeah but you know what there's still a way to do things mm -hmm. right and um if we cool like that like give me a call give me a heads up right so you know and those things do happen yeah in this industry and especially when you built like a personal relationship with a client like you up close stylists are up close like it's, it's not like a it's like a real intimate relationship so that makes total sense yeah it's it, it was a it was everything at once it was like mm -hmm. the close relationship with yeah. the client it was the money I was making at the time, yeah. I had never seen that type of money yeah. or known that that was something that I was possibly, you know, able to do. So yeah. it was a lot, but I'm grateful for that happening because yeah. yes, it took me like to a very, very low point in my life where mm -hmm. I just like, you know what, fuck it. I will just go back to retail. I will mm -hmm. find another career path for me. I was really at that point in my mm -hmm. life, but God. What was, kept you going? God. Mm -hmm. And like my friends uplift friends and family uplifting mm -hmm. me, knowing that like, okay, this happened. Mm -hmm. It's fucked up. Mm -hmm. What you gonna do about it? Right, right. You gonna cry? Sorry, my allergies, sorry. That's okay. Um, you gonna cry? What you, what you gonna mm -hmm. do? You gonna we'll let you we'll let you have this moment for this amount of time, mm -hmm. but what are you gonna change about it? Because you gotta know your story is different, Brian. Your yeah. story is not is not the same as everybody else's. So this is something that you're gonna be able to talk about. Right. So God is testing you to see, can you handle this? Because this is maybe going to be on a very smallest scale right. of some shit that might happen in eight years and in 10 years. Right, right, so right. build that tough skin. Right, right. Excuse right. my language, but like your mama ain't, my mom ain't raised no bitch. So like, right, it was like right. I had to like really like, you know, put on my, all right, cool, chest up, like right, chin up, chest right. out type of thing. And it was like, all right, regroup, what's next? That didn't take away my talent. Right. That didn't take away who I am. Right. It took away certain things, but also was for me is for is Absolutely. for me. So that wasn't for me anymore. Because if that was for me, God would have kept that there. So it was, yeah. it was, you know, it was some hurt that I had to go through and, and we experience. All go through it as business owners. Let me tell you. Yeah. Because <laughs> pe people are pe people. 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 <laughs> people be people. It. They do. They really and do. And I think in this industry, the, once you realize that, yeah. like, you really got to play that game sometimes, which is unfortunate. Yeah. I came from a place where I'm never going to play a game. I'm never going to be yeah. this. And I had to learn as I was yeah. in the game, baby, you got to play the game. Yeah. Because. Yeah. And you'll happens. know, though, because you, I also feel like you have a really good tribe around you. I have a great tribe. Who Who is the person? Who's like your biggest supporter? <sighs> It's, going, it's a few. Let me say that because mm -hmm. I don't want nobody to get mad. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say in the industry or outside, doesn't it matter. It could be family. It could be in, two, My it two best be... friends, my best friend Taylor and my best friend Falani. Mm -hmm. um, they're my two biggest supporters um, in a sense of like who I, need, who I can call and talk to about just any and everything, especially industry stuff. Mm -hmm. And they understand, but also allow me have my moment, but like pull mm -hmm. me back up. Okay, so what's next? Mm -hmm. And so like one, Falani, she's like my spiritual like soulmate. Like people mm -hmm. like, that was, she's like been like the first experience where I can understand that you can have a soulmate that is strictly platonic. That is mm -hmm. my best friend mm -hmm. and we understand each other. That's like, how I feel about my best friend. Yeah. I, we are... We have been through everything mm -hmm. together since we were 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And like, I can't explain it, but she and I have this tie that is like, I will do anything yeah. for her if I could. And she, I feel the same, Yeah, you know, that mm -hmm. she would do the same for me. It's, yeah, that's it's a, special and not everybody gets to experience you, that. You don't. And I'm blessed to be able to like, I kind of... Like, I don't have that with everybody, but yeah. I do have those kind of very close-knit relationships with a few people. I've been blessed to have real genuine relationships with people. Yeah. And a lot of times it really is with women. Like, I was raised by women. Yeah. And so my relationship with women, I have a, especially black women, obviously. Yeah. Like, I yeah. have a great relationship and understanding and love and care. Yeah. And so... Like the brother and sisterhood that I have with my two friends that uplift me on a regular, like they never get tired of me calling them 
talking about things and vice versa. Like, right. it might be moments where I can say, like, you know, I'm so sorry. And they're like, sorry for what? Like, right. say what the fuck you need to say. Right. I'm a vent. We're going to talk shit. And then right. after the end of this convo, right. we're going to figure out what what's it, next. Where are you going next? I love we're not, that. Because we're not going to sit in it. I feel like there's a resilience in you that is, like, you're not going to quit. No. I think even you're going to be surprised about where you go. But what what was the thing that brought about that resilience? Was it losing your mom at a very young age? Like, what kind of planted that seed of resilience in you? I think I, it's been like, I've been like that for forever, I think. It's something that's always been planted in me. Um, my mom was a hustler. So, like, my mom was... On Section A, she was on the county, but then she also used to work at the bookie joint mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. running numbers for macaroni Tony and them. So mm -hmm. all of those macaroni things, Tony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so like seeing someone like her were like, yeah, she was, you know, on the county and mm -hmm. but she was also still working and doing things that she needed to do to take care of home and take care of me and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So that's why I said I never needed for anything. There were things that I wanted. I didn't right. always have the newest pair of Jordans, but like right. I wasn't hungry. I didn't, ha I, you know, I had yeah. nice clothes, all yeah. those kind of things. So I feel like that was something that was instilled in me as a child to always don't settle for less. Don't settle. Yeah. Don't settle just in general. Yeah. And so that's just who I am as a person where, like, I just like to allow, let go and let God and, like, allow him to just, like, work in my life. Right. Where it's when you say that and I start laughing, I'm like, I'll be, I'm going to be surprised at where I go. I honestly believe so. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I really, so I laugh at that because it's real. Yeah. Where I know what I want to do and I yeah. know where I want to go, but I know where I'm at now and certain things that are happening. Yeah. I didn't think I was qualified for. Right. And God was like, "No, you are. You're actually mm -hmm. overqualified for these things, and you you're deserving this, and you you're do this. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that. And I'm also going to now rally people around you that believe that, and like show the love and support. Even earlier when I was saying like I had to accept certain things, me accepting that, if not that same day or the next day, is when you hit me to do this interview, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay." Okay. That's like, so th dope. I'm accepting and you're now like yeah. making those things happen. So yeah. it's it's just something that's been instilled in me. I don't think it was a thing that happened, but I'm also like a person where even in my moments of like I've gone through depression, I might be depressed, but I'm also like, all right, let me send this email for this job. Let me try and get this client. Yeah. Like I might not be the best version of myself, but I'm right. still not... Oh, I could be at rock bottom. You're not. You're not sitting in a corner with a with a bucket of ice cream. No, I might have that, but I'm on the Wi-Fi. Sending, <laughs> right, right. Sending it at the like, same time. You're yeah, sending like, an email. Yeah, like I'm. I'm doing. I'm right. multitasking. Right, like right. so, I'm definitely like allow myself to be human, but yeah. I don't allow myself to think that this is going to be the end or let somebody else write my story. Yeah. Because I felt like somebody stole my toy out the sandbox. Yeah. Oh, cool. Right. What, what are we doing next? So like, right. just that's just me. Like, I think that also might be like the little LA boy in me. Like, yeah. you know, just like, all right, what's next? Like, what right. are we about to do? Like, right. where are we going? And like, so speaking of, okay, so you do this thing for Halloween. What in the <laughs> world? I mean, it is so elaborate. Like the way <sighs> you yourself mm -hmm. like get dressed for Halloween, get other people's style for Halloween, like. I'm like, there is something so deep and creative <laughs> in you that almost feels like, that feels like a movie, like something you would do for a movie. We're going to speak that to existence. Yeah. We're going to speak that to existence. So how did it, how did it come about? I've just always been into costumes okay. and things like that from a kid. Um, I think as an adult, I don't know when that switch happened of taking it so so seriously because i've always loved themes i've always but there was definitely a switch like 10 years ago mm -hmm. with halloween and it was like this is my shit actually like, it is because somebody like is going to do a costume and they're uh. just going to be like oh they had on blue boxers i'll just wear right. these no brian is going to go find that boxer or I'm going to literally, hey, a graphic design artist, this is the print of this. Can you print this to get so I can get this fabric done for this? Like, I take Halloween right. very, 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 very serious. Right. I want to be 
what Heidi Klum is to Halloween. That's what I want. That's what Brian Gerard wants. That's what you are. Thank you. That's what you are. Like y'all, go go to please go to Brian's Instagram. You gotta check out these Halloween Thank costumes. You. Like it feels very to me. It feels very movie. No, it's definitely something that I want to do at some point in my life. Like, yeah, I want to win that Oscar. I want to win that Emmy for like, like, I want. I can that. see that. I, I, that is definitely a goal of mine. I, Let's just speak that. We're speaking that. We're at the Fashion and Color Show. We are in 2024, and we are speaking that Brian Javar is going to get an Oscar and an Emmy and an Emmy for costume design. Yes, I received that. It, old me would have been like, oh. No, I receive it. Yeah. Like I, God told me it's going to happen, and I yeah. just, I'm letting go and I'm allowing Him to. I'm in the backseat, and it's a Tesla, and I'm just letting Him <laughs> control right. Right. where we're going right. at the right. moment. Um, but you know, with Halloween, I love, love, love Halloween. I love transforming myself. I love transforming my friends. I love mm -hmm. transforming my clients. Um, and I like that people know when you come to me for Halloween, so how long does it take to like even prepare for a Halloween if I was gonna bring on Brian Javar? It depends. To help me like there's some people that I we talk about Halloween on November first for the next year. So oh like, my gosh. like me and Megan Thee Stallion, like that's Halloween has been our thing. Like we've okay. done it two years together now. Like that is just she likes taking it there. So like right. last year we turned her into like Greta from the movie The Gremlins. And she was in hair and makeup for that for like six, seven hours. And that was a rush job. And it's just crazy how the universe works. The people who did her prosthetics for the costume are the people that created Greta from what? the Gremlins the, in the original movie. Oh, wow. And I didn't know this until we were on the call. Wow. And I was just like, okay, God, I see wow. what you're saying and I see what you're doing. So right. like, yeah, like, um, I just love Halloween. Like wow. I don't know. Like you've done so. How many other people have you done for Halloween? Uh, so for Halloween, I've done uh, Coochie Tran, uh, Megan Thee Stallion. I've done E.C. Nash. I've done uh, basketball player Rondo. I've done Creature City Girls. I've done Clo uh, uh, Chloe uh, Bailey. I have done wow a lot. <laughs> wow, you have. I'm really trying to think of like who else has. I've done Jacob Lattimore. Wow. Um, I'm forgetting some people when they're wow. gonna be like, oh, really? I don't know. I feel like there's something there that's gonna lead to like other things. So I'm excited to see the evolution Thank you. of where that goes. But I'm just saying, you killing it. You are Thank the you. goat. Thank you. I received <laughs> that. For sure. Thank you. So when it comes to advice, because I'm sure stylists reach out to you, young people reach out to you all the time. What kind of advice do you give them? It sounds so cliche, but don't give up. But I give them more details of certain things. Mm -hmm. Like, don't give up. You might be an assistant and you might be working a job that's a net 90 for a commercial job. Mm -hmm. People don't sometimes don't understand what a net 90 is. Like, so the advice that I would give them is like, hustle, get the jobs done. Being an intern assistant first before you dive into it because yeah. you sometimes don't understand where things are. So you might be working a job that's a net 30, a net 90, a net 10, or it's like, oh, you do the job today, you think you'll get paid in two and weeks. And even if they do net 90, you might not get paid in net 90. I'm just saying. And so I try and give them the uh, real things that I had to learn and experience yeah. and, and not just, a lot of people are like, oh, I can, it's not just about styling. Yeah. Do you know how to form co a correct invoice? Yeah. Do you, do you know how to build a team? Yeah. Do you know what kind of tailor you need to do for this? Do you know how many tailors you need when you're doing a certain shoe and you have more than one talent? Yeah. Do you know what show them? So like, I try to give them advice that I needed and that mm -hmm. I, that, was instilled in me and not just the don't give up don't give up because mm -hmm. like yeah don't give up but yeah in the midst of don't give up like what is actually going to drive you to like be inspired to do that next thing and you know some like i don't like to be cliche with the with the things yeah. i don't like to like tell them bs like i really like to give them some real information and some real game that yeah. i had to learn on my own also things that was instilled in me from the people that i worked with um but other advice that i give to people is do the work and it will come i'm 35 and i start interning at the age of 20 i'm at sorry interning at the age of 18 19 and i didn't think that i have arrived until last week and mm. so that's 
15, 16 years in the mm. making. And if I'm being very honest and transparent, so like that's 15, 16 years yeah. doing it. Like yeah. I was doing things, yeah. but like now I feel like I'm doing it. I feel like yeah. I'm in it yeah. and in a very humble and confident way. Yeah. And so don't look at anybody else's journey. I remember when I was younger, I was like 20, 21, and I would see people do certain things and I'm like, I want to do this. They just fell into mm -hmm. this. I was jealous and I was bitter about things. And I'm so glad that God removed those things from me. And that mm -hmm. only lasted a six month thing. God was like, you're not that type of person. Yeah. Be happy for them. Yeah. That's not, this isn't your time. This isn't yeah. what you're supposed to do. And I had to learn at a very young age. And I'm grateful that I did. Yeah. But where I'm at now... I'm grateful that I went through those things. I'm grateful for the times that I was angry, mm -hmm. that I was upset, because it helped mold me who I am to yeah. today. So trust the journey. Like <laughs> Tisha Campbell said, it's the journey. So, it's, the, it's the journey. So it is really, absolutely the journey. And the journey. And the person that's being built along the journey. Yeah, because right? everybody's journey is different. Everybody's yeah. experience is different. So yeah. yeah, like. So what's next for Brian and Javar? Like, where do you want to go next? Where do you see? What are your dreams? My dreams, I would love to have a collection collab mm -hmm. with a brand. I would love to be a creative director of a great brand. Um, and I would also like to be on the cover of Hollywood Reporter a few times. Mm -hmm. Um, and not with like the typical client of what something looks like. I, I know that like one of my talents are challenges and things that mm -hmm. people don't see as the typical fashion and uh, like body type. So like mm -hmm. just, you know, I would love to continue my journey and like taking on these challenges, but also killing it. Um, but I also, I would like to go into TV and film and mm -hmm. like, in like a decade, like yeah. right now, like instant gratification. Yeah. So like, I like the red carpets, I like the music videos, well, all of that. you never know. I'm going to tell you something about when you start speaking stuff and don't start writing it down. That's, I'm, <laughs> that timetable, you just don't know. I, and that's why I'm just letting yeah, go and letting go. Because yeah. where I'm at now, I didn't think that I would be yeah. where I'm at now. Yeah. Like I dreamed of it, yeah. but I didn't think I was there. You're there. Thank you. You're absolutely there. And I'm so excited. I got a gift for you. Oh, thank you. This is yours. Oh, thank you. And um, I've already written it in Ooh. it for you. But when I see you, I see someone who's not afraid to take risk. I'm not. And when I tell you, like, that inspires me. Mm -hmm. Because I talk about cliff jumping all the time. And when I see another person who cliff jumps, I'm like, it's my person. You know, it's crazy that you say that because I believe that. Like, I'm mm -hmm. the cliff jumping and taking risks. But I don't do it like, oh, this is a risk. I look at, it's just a natural thing that I'm mm -hmm. just doing. It's just what you do. Yeah. I'm starting to see now what others are seeing. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm just being my natural self. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing that I am a gift yeah. to people. I'm a gift to the industry. You are. And I'm... And it's okay to say that in, yeah. in a humble way. And I, I've been, I've struggled with finding, staying humble, but also accepting certain Absolutely. things that may who you are. Yeah. That's who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. All right. So here go your rapid fire questions. Okay. Early bird or night owl? Both. <laughs> both? <laughs> both? You don't mean both when you go to sleep. In the Uber home. Okay. Coffee or tea? <laughs> tea. Text a phone call. Phone call. Phone call. Dress up or dress down? Dress up. I love it. Yes. Thank you. So much. Thank, you. Thank you. That's a wrap. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Fashion and Color Podcast. I want to thank our production partner, PBA Entertainment, the Harlem's Fashion Row team. Thank you so much for your support of Harlem's Fashion Row and for your support of designers of color. Please be sure to leave us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to share this with a friend. Welcome to the HFR movement.